Hello, and welcome to City View, a show about what's going on in the city of Salina government. In this episode, we'll show you how the city repairs a water main break. We'll also tell you about new road paving technology in Salina and let you know about the resumption of school speed limits. But first, here's a quick recap of the actions taken by the City Commission at their August 12th meeting. After a public hearing, commissioners approved the 2025 budget and comprehensive fee schedule. After another public hearing, they declared the structure at 254 North Penn Avenue to be dangerous and ordered it to be either repaired or removed. After approving the consent agenda, the City Commission approved levying assessments for payment of unpaid nuisance abatements, approved a contract for design of improvements to Jerry Ivy Memorial Park, and approved an agreement for final design of bridge replacements as part of the Smoky Hill River Renewal Project. Commissioners approved resolutions of advisability for infrastructure improvements to Liberty Edition No. 3 and Stone Lake Edition Phase 3B, approved Salina on Tap as a special event and allowing alcoholic consumption at the event, and approved agreements with Jose Peppers allowing outdoor dining and placement of private improvements in Campbell Plaza. The next meeting of the City Commission will take place on Monday, August 26th at 4 p.m. in Room 107 of the City County Building. The meeting agenda will be available on Friday, August 23rd on the City's website, salina-ks.gov. Salina City Commission meetings are available to view on Salina TV, Cox Cable Channel 20, as well as on the City's Facebook page and YouTube page. For Channel 20 schedule information, please visit salina-tv.com. The city has recently implemented a new road paving technology. The technology, called Pressure Pave, could reduce road repairs and could save money over the long term. Well, Pressure Pave is a pressurized process of laying down the crack seal across the entire roadway and pressurized sealant that goes into the cracks and then followed by a secondary layer, which is a modified aggregate. Well, we're hoping to get 10 years out of it, because it's a, it's a self-healing process. Will it crack? Yes. But once you get the heat and the roadway traffic on it, it should seal that back up. Because if we can be able to keep from getting the moisture through the asphalt type surface into the ground below, then we, we eliminate the deterioration, and not only the deterioration, but you know, it's just needing to come back and repair it again and again. It firms up sooner so that people can get onto the roadway sooner than a regular hot mix, and yet at the same time, um, we should not have to be able to do anything with it but maybe put a second overlay over it after 10 years or so. At the present time in Sunset Park, uh, marketplace area like in front of Sam's and Target, we are at Schilling and Ohio and working south on Ohio to the city ca uh, county line. The city of Salina Streets is an asset to the city. And because it is an asset, we need to manage it and try to manage it well. The city will continue to use pressure pave on select city streets in the future. School is back in session, and that means school speed limits are in effect. The school speed limit is 20 miles per hour and in effect at the beginning and end of the school day. Remember, Kansas law states that when a school bus stop arm is extended and the flashing lights on the bus have been activated, vehicles traveling in both directions must come to a complete stop. Drivers are also encouraged to be aware of children, school buses, the school zones around schools, and the reduced speed limits. From 2018 to 2023, an average of 127 water main breaks occurred in the city of Salina each year. On July 17th, a water main break occurred on Funston Avenue near Sunset Park. A crew from the Utilities Department was dispatched to repair the main. Here's how they repaired the main. Right now we're on a main break on Funston in Salina, Kansas. The call came in and I had an employee come in around 6 a.m. He came out to verify that this was a main break. His first priority is to 
verify it's a main break, and then to get a hold of the operator at the water plant to call in an emergency locate. After he's done doing that, his job is to locate the water valves because we want to stop the water from causing any damage. In older areas like where we're at, these, these valves don't operate very well. So he has opened a fire hydrant by Sunset Drive in order to relieve the pressure on the brake so that the brake doesn't damage more of the pipe or the street. So we have relieved the pressure. We are now in the process of setting up traffic control. This is the first thing that we want to get done to keep traffic out of our work zone for the safety of the persons that are driving through it and also for the safety of the employees who have to work on the main brake. So we usually temporarily shut down the, the uh, street and I know that it does cause inconvenience, but it's all about safety for everybody that's involved coming down the street. What we're doing now is he's located where the water main is. And then as if you look over here, there's a meter pit and he's gonna mark these services out to the main so we don't rip the services out as we excavate to find the brake with the main brake. For corrosion control, we use gutter buddies and we put them in the gutter to try to help eliminate all the mud that's running down the gutter line. Unfortunately, when we get called in, especially at night, the main could have been broke for two, three hours before anybody gets out here. So a lot of that already settles down the street. But we're in the process of getting into a better program of putting them out as soon as we can to try to stop any additional mud from going down the street and getting to the storm sewers. We are clear now to start doing the work. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to locate the water main. The guys are going to get out the presser, the hose, and a star drill, and they're going to star drill a hole and use a prod rod to try to find the water main, and then we'll try to find the leak. You can hear the brakes. You'll get the louder sound. You can kind of see where the brake is, or hear it a little better. Right now, this is the only one that has noise on it. So with this being the only one with noise, we have a meter pit over here. So we're getting ready to sound the meter pit to see if we can hear any noise on it. And it'll let us know how close to the service the brake is. With the water main right here where we had prodded, we are going to come over here and we're going to start jackhammering and we're going to jackhammer to make sure uh, probably about a foot, foot and a half on the back side of the main to take the trench line out. And then we're going to come over here and we're going to go five feet on this side of it and over to take everything out as we excavate. We're getting ready to excavate right here now to dig up the water main. We're gonna take the concrete out. We're gonna spin around and put all the spoil behind us, trying to keep it all out of the gutter to keep the debris from going downstream. guidelines where we don't need a trench box. The excavation is safe all the way around. There's no debris that can hit him. He's now underneath the water main and he's getting ready to clean it to put a clamp on.
continue to force the water because we can't get it shut down. Even though it makes our job harder, it keeps pressure on the main and keeps any dirt or debris to get in the main. It's impossible that it's under pressure for anything to get into the water main. As you can see, the clamp is on, it's tight. Now we're gonna start opening the valves and bleed it through the fire hydrant. Even though we didn't lose pressure, when we open valves, it causes dirty water. So we wanna open a hydrant and flush the main out. That way no one complains or has a lot of dirty water. Well, what happens from here is we're going to continue to pump the water out because it's coming down from the hydrant. We have pushed the dirt over to one side so that if it rains, the gutter will only be one gutter affected by the mud. We have gutter buddy out that will stop it from going down the gutter line. Then we'll turn this over to the street department. They will come out and clean up the excavation and put flow fill in the hole and that will harden like a concrete and then they'll put concrete over the top of it. So we greatly appreciate what they do for us by helping us, you know, get the, get the street all cleaned up, getting it put back in for the customers of Slider. Well, that'll do it for this edition of City View. For more information about any aspect of the City of Salina government, visit the city's website at salina-ks.gov. And be sure to follow us on our social media channels. We'll be back with an all-new episode of City View on Friday, August 23rd. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.